Hi guys, hope you're all okay. Today I'm going to be doing my November, yes, November. <laughs> I keep on wanting to say December because I'm very excited for Christmas, but no, this is my November favourites. Um, I'm going to try and keep the video as short as possible, but you guys know I like to ramble, so I'm going to jump right in. Okay, so I'm going to start with beauty favourites. Um, yes, the first thing I want to talk about is the MAC Fix Plus. This is the travel size. I have the full size as well as this, um, which I really don't use because this one fits in my handbag or my makeup bag. And, like, I've had this forever and I use it quite a lot. I must admit I've been using it a lot lately. And it just doesn't seem to ever go down. Like, I've used this to death and it's like <laughs> less than a centimetre gone. Um, this stuff is amazing. Um, I use it under my makeup. Um, I'm not the biggest foundation wearer. I'm really enjoying a Clinique foundation at the moment, but I don't wear it every day. Um, I'm kind of just concealer. Um, and when your concealer gets a little bit dry, if you put the MAC Fix Plus on and then put the concealer on and then kind of blend, it makes it go a lot further. It makes it stay forever. Um, but yeah, it just makes your base go on really nicely and it helps it stay in power. Um, I have heard people use this for pigment, for the eyeshadow, to foil. I, I think every time I talk about MAC Fix Plus, um, I talk about foiling. I still haven't done it, um, but I really love this product. Some people put it on after they've applied their makeup. I've not tried that. I always put it on before I put my base on, um, but it's awesome. The next item is kind of a mini palette, I suppose. It is by Elizabeth Arden. And I feel like I'm using this in the wrong season because the packaging is so spring-like, but I've been reaching for this a lot this month. I'll show you the colours. Um, the colours I go for is this pretty gold colour and the... Well, actually, all of the colours apart from the black have kind of been my go-to ones for the month. I love the gold by itself. I love the bronze colour by itself. Um, and I love having them together. And then this kind of white highlight colour I've been using as a highlight, funnily enough, or in like... Is this your water duct? Like right in the corner. Uh, the, the black colour I like, but it's got a gold shimmer through it and I have a nicer black with a gold shimmer, um, but the other three colours I am loving. So even though the packaging is really spring, um, I do feel they're quite festive, the gold and, and the warm bronzy brown. It doesn't have, does it have a name? There's some gold writing on here, but my eyes just won't focus on it. There's too many sparkly lights around because I have my Christmas tree up. Um, but yes, did I say it's Elizabeth Arden? If I haven't, it's Elizabeth Arden. Last item that kind of comes under makeup, I guess, is um, this Bourjois lipstick. The packaging is kind of gross. Um, not that the packaging is gross, just it's got a bit gross for some reason. This shade is called Lovely Rouge. I have it on at the moment. And it looks like that. I just really love it. It also smells like, I'm sure I've just put lipstick on my nose, but it smells like Sweeties, but not like how Mac, because Mac is a very vanilla-y sweet flavour, scent. But this smells actually like something I've eaten, but it's really nice. It's just, I hate the expression, but it is a your lips but better. It's a matte colour, but it's still moisturising. I just really think it's pretty. The next item is a skin toner. Yes, a calming face toner. This is by, I have no idea how you're meant to pronounce this. I pronounce it Norbe, but I don't think that's right. Um, I have actually got a couple of 
products from this brand. Both came in a glossy box. Um, but yes, this is a natural and organic calming face toner. I'm really enjoying it. It's some toners I find are a bit harsh. Um, I think because I have combination skin and um, I get the occasional zit. I've got a few going on at the moment. And sometimes when you do that and you use a toner, it stings. This toner does not. Um, yeah, I just really like it. It's quite, it does feel nice when you put it on. The blurb on the back says it's a refreshing lotion, provides four in one skincare action. Applied with a cotton pad, it effectively removes traces of makeup and impurities from the skin. It also cleanses, tones, and soothes the skin thanks to chamomile and, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, um, Gutu, Gotu, Cola Extract. It's just really nice, it makes your skin feel nice, it's very clean, it just, it doesn't feel harsh, it's just a really lovely product. I have spoken a lot in the past about how much I love the Aussie leave-in conditioners and I picked this up thinking that was what it was and it's not. Um, it is the Aussie Miracle Recharge Take the Heat lightweight conditioning spray leave-in heat styling protection I love it it smells lovely it's a different scent to the normal leave-in conditioner I have from Aussie um, but it's still really pleasant um, I have been a big fan of the Tresemme heat protector spray for I've been using that forever um, and that I feel gives you quite a lot of hold I don't know if this is supposed to give you any form of hold, um, but I've still really enjoyed it. it. My hair feels, obviously I bleach my hair, I use heat on my hair, I try and keep heat to a minimum, um, but I do feel that in the winter months I do use more heat on my hair because I don't want to leave it air dry, because I don't want to leave the house with, with damp hair. Um, but this, I've just really enjoyed this product this month. It smells lovely and it does feel like it is protecting my hair. And non-beauty favourites this month. This is a really strange one, um, but I'm including it. It's lists. Now, I'm a big list fan, not going to lie. At work, I have lists of lists of lists. I have my monthly to-do list. I have a weekly to-do list and I have a daily to-do list and I have them electronically and then I have a hard copy. Um, the monthly and weekly one is laminated and I use a special pen to tick them off as I do and then I rub them out. I am that kind of geek, organisational geek. I am very organised at work, I'm not so organised at home. Um, I kind of take my business hat off and at home I'm a bit more chilled but this time of year I normally have present lists and um, this month it really has expanded my list making <laughs> life. Um, when I say this time of year, like the festive period I have, um, for presents alone I have Oh, I feel like I'm letting all my geeky secrets out here. So, present list wise, so I have what I've bought for people, what I need to buy for people, or what I want to buy for people, and what I have left to purchase. Now that sounds like it all should be on the same list, but it really isn't. For example, I'll write all the people I have to buy for, and what I think I want to buy them. But then you might find something else and actually, oh, that's perfect for Rachel. So I buy this for Rachel. Well, it's different to what I wanted to buy her. So the budget might slightly differ. So then I have to find something else that Rachel wants or I think Rachel would enjoy, but tweak the budget. So that's why you end up with three separate Christmas lists. And then I also write a list as I wrap them. And the reason for that is, um, example, hello Gilly, hi, um, last year I brought my, I bought my brother-in-law Mike a present, 
Um, and then it wasn't until the day before or two days before I had to deliver the Christmas presents, I realised I hadn't wrapped that present. And then when I searched for it, I couldn't find it. And then I checked my emails and I realised that Amazon had emailed me like a week and a half prior and said this item isn't actually in stock anymore and they refunded me and I didn't have a present. So I had to go out and panic buy um, a present for my brother-in-law and if I had wrote a list as I was wrapping them I would have realised this sooner and I wouldn't have had that stress. So this year there's that list. Um, and the list thing has kind of expanded, like, not gonna lie, I have a list here, and on this list it's the things I have to do this evening, and then there's a sub-list of the items I'm going to tell you are my favourites for this month. Uh, you know, there is a Christmas card list, I have a um, list that's over on the dining table of things that I want to record for YouTube this month. Um, I have <laughs> I have a list of things that I need to I'm going to see my mum on I'm not sure when this video is going up but I'm going to go and see my mum for the day soon and I've got a list of things that I need to take with me I'm going for the day I will be leaving the house at seven o'clock in the morning and I'll be back before six ish um, but I still have a list of things I have to take so lists are kind of taking over my life but I think it's good because when I'm at home I'm not as organised as I should be and I hate forgetting things and letting people down so if it's written on the list it will get done. Favourite TV programme of the month has to be the Frankenstein, the Frankenstein Chronicles. Um, it's got Sean Bean in. I love Sean Bean. I think I have already spoken about this over on the vlog channel. Um, if you don't know who Sean Bean is, where, how are we friends? <laughs> Sean Bean, um, he's Sharp, which is one of my all-time favourite TV programmes. He is Ned uh, Stark from the first series of um, Game of Thrones. How did I get that name? Um, and he's been in loads of films and stuff. And he's just an awesome English actor who I'm quite obsessed with and I fancy him in Sharp. Anyway, it's his new TV programme, um, it's over on ITV en Encore, Encore. Um, it's just really awesome, it's kind of scary, gross, but not too scary because John's really enjoying it and he doesn't like horror programmes, like he won't watch Walking Dead or anything. Um, and basically, Sean Bean is a detective in oldie worldy England, it's like late 18th century, early 19th century, um, and yeah, there's some murders, and he is being a good old, good old uh, copper, um, but there's some twisted dark stuff in there as well, and there's loads of references to Sharp, which is like the first ever TV programme he was like really big in, um, which is like early 90s and I love it. It's just, I'm really enjoying it. I've only seen two episodes. The third episode is on Sky Plus waiting to be watched and I'm really tempted to watch it tonight while John's out but I won't. I'll be a good wife and I'll wait for him but it's a really good TV programme and you can still get it on um, Sky Demand so I'd really recommend it. While I'm still on TV, this is a really random thing for me, um, but I, there's an advert on at the moment and there are loads of Christmas adverts and I could do a whole video on it. I may do a video on it, I'm not sure. Um, but I, we, as a couple, me and John don't watch a lot of adverts because we don't watch a lot of live TV. We have Sky Plus and we watch pretty much everything via that. Um, so you fast forward the adverts so you don't see them that often. Even X Factor, we start it a little bit later or when um, Game of Thrones is on, which is like mine and John's favourite TV programme of all time, we always start it like 15 minutes. We always start watching it 15 minutes after it starts so we can fast forward the adverts. But recently I saw the um, Just Eat advert. I will link it below. It is now my favourite advert. 
like my favourite non-Christmas advert of all time. There's a bit where it's like about mushroom fried rice and I have to sing it and me and John sing sing it to each other on a regular. I will find it, it has to be on YouTube somewhere, I will link it below and hopefully you find it as funny as me. And the last favourite of the month has to be this. Um, it looks a bit strange. Hopefully you'll have already seen this. Um, this was in my Egypt haul, I will link that below for you. Uh, basically you pop a little candle in it. They had it in the shop as a light fitting um, but I don't really know how it would fit to the ceiling. There is kind of like a handle thing on the inside but I don't know how you'd bend it to get the light fitting in there. So I've just been having it on a shelf in the window with a candle in it and I just think it's so pretty and a lot of my decorative items in the house have been put away because the Christmas decorations have come out but this has remained because I just love it. It's kind of this silvery, coppery, rose gold because it kind of changes colour and colours in different parts. It looks so pretty with a candle in it. Um, yeah, so definitely my last favourite for the, for the month of November. And that is the end of my favourites. I fear that I have rambled quite a lot. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up comment, subscribe, share, and I will talk to you all very soon. Bye guys.